Resisting False Union by Father Alexi Young from his book, The Rush to Embrace. The first thing we must do is pray and repent with all our hearts. Then we must appeal to our hierarchs, whoever they are, wherever they may be, to do everything in their power to ensure open and public condemnation of the Balamond Agreement and anything else that hints of union fever. It is not enough for just this or that bishop in the United States to say, well, whatever Patriarch Bartholomew does is of no concern to us. It has nothing to do with us. What any Patriarch does affects all of us in one way or another. We are all part of the same body of Christ, and therefore we are all responsible for the faith, from the most anonymous layperson to the most highly placed hierarch. We are all accountable to God for the precious treasure of Orthodox Christianity. Those of us who fear to speak up must take courage from the example of the greatly revered Elder Philotheos Servakos of Greece, who boldly rebuked Patriarch Athenagoras and others for compromising Orthodoxy. About this, the Elder said, I thank the all-good God, the provider of blessings and gifts, who gave me the faith the courage, and the power to speak against leaders of the church and not to be afraid. A process of education should be launched, a process that includes, first, more and better instruction concerning the nature of the church and her boundaries. We must also teach the faithful the true nature of Roman Catholicism and the specific ways in which she differs from orthodoxy. Second, We must start reading spiritual texts, in particular the lives of the saints, which impart to us the flavor of true Christianity. By acquiring this flavor, we can begin to develop an orthodox palate and distinguish between what is orthodox and what is not. This is not a time for half measures. Orthodox priests who tell their flock that they may attend Roman Catholic or Episcopal churches if there is no orthodox parish nearby must be corrected and disciplined if they persist in this grievous error. Priests must be again reminded that they may not, under any circumstances, give Holy Communion to non-Orthodox. Also, those who tell Roman Catholic and Protestant inquirers that they should stay in their own churches and not convert to Orthodoxy must be reprimanded. Immortal souls are at stake. In 1976, the late Metropolitan Philaret of the Russian Orthodox Church Abroad wrote the following, We know that among you some are attracted by so-called ecumenism. We fully understand that some want to feel the support of a neighbor, of someone who is also a believer, even though in some way other than you are. Against this one cannot object. But even under the best of mutual relations, there is still a boundary which an Orthodox Christian cannot cross, where the holy of holies of the true faith begins. Here is what St. John of Kronstadt said in this regard more than a hundred years ago. In many Orthodox Christians, the true faith has been converted into indifference, indifference with regard to any faith, Roman Catholic, Lutheran, Jewish, Muslim, and even paganism. We hear that in every faith one can please God, that is, as if every faith were equally pleasing to God, and as if lying and truth, righteousness and unrighteousness can be indifferent for God. It is our duty to warn you that Roman Catholicism at the present time is undergoing a frightful crisis. The word ecumenical means belonging to or accepted by the Christian Church throughout the world. This reflects the rule of faith given by St. Vincent of Lorenz. Christian truth is that which has been believed everywhere, always, and by all. This is the preferred definition of the term, and the only patristic definition of it. Unfortunately, ecumenical has come to mean something quite different in the latter part of the 20th century. Under the influence of the World Council of Churches, ecumenical now means the following. The unity of Christ's church has been shattered through the centuries. All Christian churches are more or less equal, and each has at least a share of the truth. Therefore, all denominations must be united in order to recapture or recreate the wholeness that once existed. 
This is modern day ecumenism, and it is extremely dangerous. A superb example of the first and original kind of ecumenist is St. Mark of Ephesus, who has already been mentioned. The following is from St. Mark's letter on the subject of true ecumenism. It is as meaningful today as it was 500 years ago, meaningful to Orthodox Christians who find themselves on the verge of a new false union, but meaningful also to pious Roman Catholics who are beseeching heaven for guidance in these disturbing times. Therefore, St. Mark writes, insofar as this is what has been commanded you by the holy apostles, stand aright, hold firmly to the traditions which you have received, both written and by word of mouth, that you be not deprived of your firmness if you become led away by the delusions of the lawless. May God, who is all-powerful, make them, the Roman Catholics, also to know their delusion, and having delivered us from them as from evil terrors, may he gather us into his granaries like pure and useful wheat in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the brave spirit of St. Mark, representatives of the Greek Orthodox Church in the United States, attending the North American Faith and Order Study Conference in 1957, issued a remarkable statement on the subject of dialogue and Christian unity, quoted in part below. We are glad to take part in a study conference, for all Christians should seek unity. On the other hand, we feel that the whole program of the forthcoming discussion has been framed from a point of view which we cannot conscientiously admit. The unity we seek is for us a given unity, which has never been lost and could not have been lost. This unity in the Church of Christ is for us a unity in the historical Church, in the fullness of faith, in the fullness of continuous sacramental life. For us, this unity is embodied in the Orthodox Church. We admit, of course, that the unity of Christendom has been disrupted, but we do not admit that the unity of the Church, and precisely of the visible and historical Church, has ever been broken or lost. It is with humility that we voice the conviction that the Orthodox Church can make a special contribution to the cause of Christian unity, because, since Pentecost, she has possessed the true unity intended by Christ. Therefore, all Christian groups outside the Orthodox Church can recover their unity only by entering into the bosom of the Orthodox Church. These words were written only 37 years ago. Note, now in 2023, 66 years ago. More recently, in the late 1960s, Elder Philotheos observed, Let there be union, but in the way Christ wishes it, far from every worldly purpose and every compromise, by remaining rooted and immovable in our orthodoxy, we also give an opportunity to any of the heretics to awaken and to be incorporated into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, so that they might find their salvation. Behold, then, another true ecumenist who, out of love, calls all to the fullness of the truth. In general, North American Orthodoxy has been either concerned about preserving ethnic identity and national roots, or, more recently, we have been fascinated by the possibility of jurisdictional unity, about which there has been a great deal of discussion. But, like Nero, we have fiddled while Rome burned, for in the meantime there has been a slow but conscious movement to bring Orthodoxy closer in spirit to changes in modern secular life, ensuring future disastrous spiritual consequences, the loss of Orthodox consciousness among the clergy and laity alike. It is this lack of genuine piety that has produced our shameful indifference to political ecumenism. This is a growing crisis, and it is not confined to any one jurisdiction. It is a pan-Orthodox problem, and it is now reaching disastrous proportions, a growing spirit one might even say a demon, of worldliness is invading every aspect of church life. This worldliness is part of a new kind of orthodoxy being preached today, and it results in a saccharine, sentimental, rosy-hued neo-Christianity, writes Archbishop of Eriki of Jordanville, devoid of all labor and struggle, an imaginary, 
all-encompassing pseudo-Christian love. We are deceived when we believe that it is not necessary to labor over oneself, and no spiritual struggle is required. And yet there are many Orthodox Christians in this country who have never been taught otherwise. Our faith, we must never forget, is the faith of holy ascetics. This is of its essence, and it is one of the critical things that sets us apart from Roman Catholicism. To the degree that we have allowed the ascetic dimension to be banished from our midst, to that same degree we are unable to see what distinguishes us from Catholicism, because, in essence, we are beginning to look and feel and act like modern Roman Catholics, only with an Eastern flair. Rather than seeking harmful fellowship with Roman Catholics on their terms, we should be drawing them to us, to the saving ark of salvation. Too many of us lack a sufficiently developed Orthodox consciousness to be aware of the present ecumenist threat to our faith. Not only is the development of such a consciousness greatly hindered by the relativism and materialism, the opposite of asceticism, that saturate our society, but our natural human longing for peace and harmony, for love and brotherhood, has made us vulnerable to ecumenical sweet talk. An inadequate knowledge of church history and a weak understanding of orthodox ecclesiology is now putting us even further at risk. Brothers and sisters, our holy orthodox faith is at stake here. We cannot afford to be naive, and ignorance is not bliss. It is suicide. And it is this very ignorance that has made possible the growing union fever we see around us today. Many, perhaps all of us, have learned how to love inconsequentials rather than holiness and otherworldliness. Concern for our comfort and material well-being is more important to us than truth. Thus, many have passively tolerated this dangerous and false ecumenism as a way of quietly masking our own sinfulness and lack of repentance. We are instead filled with self-infatuation and self-importance. And this has become a substitute for real spiritual life. It is precisely this, the soul-numbing and worldly subjectivity of the Roman Catholic Church, that we find so attractive, so enticing. We have forgotten the words of St. John of Kronstadt. My brothers, only the Orthodox faith purifies and sanctifies human nature corrupted by sin, renews the decayed, enlightens the darkened, heals those wounded by sin, warms the frozen, and unites those separated from God.